Welcome once again to this 10 minute word break. This is Youth Pastor Alicia Fields, and I am coming to you from Victory Fellowship Outreach Ministries based out of Norristown, Pennsylvania. Um, we're going to grab our Bibles or your Bible apps. We're going to go right into the Word of God. I am going to be reading today from 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 14 through 18. Um, I'll be in the King James Version today. You can certainly follow along in any version of your choice, and it reads, be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God, as God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. And I'm going to be speaking today from the topic of the masked believer, the masked believer. Um, so uh, many of you may be familiar with a television show entitled The Masked Singer, um, in which singers or celebrities are on stage to sing um, but they're masked as to not reveal their true identity until the end uh, when they are asked to unmask. So the audience has to try to guess who the singer is. Um, so similar concept, the masked believer, um, in that there are many believers who are presenting themselves and masks form. Um, and the mask that I'm speaking of today is not the face covering that we're using um, to keep ourselves safe during the pandemic. But this mask is similar to a mask that one may wear in terms of a costume or uh, for a masquerade party. Um, and so a mask in this case that I am speaking of is used as a covering of the face to disguise or conceal identity. And so in these verses that we read, um, we have a clear admonition to be not yoked with unbelievers. So the word yoke means to be bound together. Um, in the Amplified, the definition and how they uh, break out the word yoke, it means to not form alliances uh, with them or to come under a different yoke that is inconsistent or different than one's faith. Um, so once again, these yokes are partnerships, alliances, collaborations. So um, this is what it means to be yoked together. Um, and in other words, um, this yoking creates what's considered a mismatch or a misalliance. Um, it is uh, taking on a little of something in exchange for another. And so for the believer, it's taking on more of worldliness and of um, the world's ideologies and what is being presented in exchange for them taking on a watered down gospel from us. And so what are some examples of this exchange or this yoke that is being presented that is now making um, itself known even in the church. So one, we have what's called the doctrine of inclusion. This is says that all roads lead to heaven and all faiths lead to the one true gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, we see it in what is known as secularism and humanism, where men and women have become gods unto themselves. Uh, we see it in paganism, which are practices rooted in false worship, and have adopted, um, they've been adopted into the faith and offer them to the true and living God or Yahweh. Um, and so some of these paganistic practices that we see um, in the Christendom actually originated in false worship. We see it in deism, 
in which man is said to hold the answers to society's problems. So it is not the acknowledgement of God who holds all answers and all wisdom and all sovereignty, but it's in man. We're in the age of spiritualism in which man has insight and knowledge that is revealed by ancestors. It's also known in what is called necromancy or the use of mediums and psychics to communicate with the dead. And so today in our society, we have believers who have taken on other beliefs in exchange for biblical principles. You may have heard um, karma, which is used in said, um, instead of speaking to the principle of sowing and reaping, uh, we have believers uh, using the term karma. Or you may hear one saying, oh, good vibes only, good vibes over here, which relates to energy instead of knowing the difference between the holy and unholy, clean and unclean, and the spirit of God and the demonic. But we've been admonished in this scripture specifically to come out from among them and to touch not the unclean thing. So this is to come out, but not and not to remain hidden or blended in among them, but to come out from them. Um, we have believers who are having conversations and negotiating their souls with the unclean and forming soul ties with the demonic. Um, the first example of this that we saw was in the Garden of Eden when the serpent, which was uh, used by Satan himself to have a conversation with Eve. And so oftentimes we are engaging in conversations and we are finding ourselves getting entangled and twisted up because we are entertaining the enemy. This is not an area that we can have conversations with the enemy about. Um, we need to be fleeing, separating, coming out from the places that God has called us to be separate in. You know, many a times believers are trying to figure out how far they can go before they enter sin. But even in Genesis 4, 7, as we saw in the beginning, in the creation, where God began to speak to Cain and he said unto him, he says, sin lieth at the door. In other words, sin was knocking. It was waiting to come in. But the Lord told him to have rule over it, not to partner with it, not to form an agreement with it, not to form an alliance with it, not to collaborate with it. But he said to have rule over it. And the only way to have rule over sin is to separate oneself from it. And so I just want to leave with you once again, the, the final verse what we read was in verse 17, which said, wherefore come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty.